Welcome to Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S. Introduction to and History of Modern Healthcare in the U.S. This is Lecture B. The component, Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S., is a survey of how healthcare and public health are organized and how services are delivered in the U.S. It covers public policy, relevant organizations and their interrelationships, professional roles, legal and regulatory issues, and payment systems. It also addresses health reform initiatives in the U.S. The learning objectives for Introduction to and History of Modern Healthcare in the U.S. are to define key terms in healthcare and public health, describe components of healthcare delivery and healthcare systems, Discuss examples of improvements in public health. Define core values and paradigm shifts in U.S. healthcare. And describe the technology used in the delivery and administration of healthcare. This lecture will provide a definition of public health and detail how public health has improved healthcare. According to Charles Edward Winslow, a famous American bacteriologist and public health expert in the first half of the 20th century, Public health is the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting health through the organized efforts and informed choices of society, organizations both public and private, communities, and individuals. More recently, Dr. Thomas Frieden, the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, has noted that public health focuses on denominators or the entire population and who can benefit from public health interventions. So, what are the 10 great public health achievements in the United States this century? The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention lists them as vaccination, motor vehicle safety, safe workplaces, control of infectious diseases, a decline in death from coronary heart disease and stroke, safer and healthier food, healthier mothers and babies, family planning, the fluoridation of drinking water, and the recognition of tobacco use as a health hazard. It's interesting that each of these achievements requires large populations to actively shift the way they think about illness and act in a large-scale fashion to make changes in behavior in order to successfully implement public health improvement. It's also interesting that though scientific advancements have spearheaded many of these achievements, Public education remains a primary motivator of public health achievements. Let's focus our attention on the control of infectious diseases. A classic example of public health success in this arena is the successful control of typhoid. Typhoid is caused by bacteria and is spread by ingesting contaminated food or water. The organism spreads through the body via the bloodstream and causes a fever and a systemic, sometimes potentially fatal, illness. In 1891, the typhoid death rate in Chicago alone was 174 per 100,000 people. Now, thanks to public health measures such as sanitation and improved hygiene, combined with the development of a vaccine, only about 400 cases are seen in the United States each year, and most of these cases originate when patients travel in developing countries. Another example of the role of public health in the successful control of infectious disease is smallpox. Smallpox is a devastating disease. It's an epidemic viral illness and was responsible for hundreds of millions of deaths in the 20th century alone. No effective treatment was ever developed for the disease, and it killed about 30% of patients who were infected. Between 65 and 80% of those who survived the disease were marked with deep scars, most prominently on the face. As late as the 18th century, smallpox was responsible for the death of every 10th child born in France. In the early 1950s, there were about 50 million cases of smallpox each year worldwide. By 1967, this figure fell to 10 to 15 million because of mass vaccination drives. By 1977, smallpox was eradicated. This was predominantly due to an aggressive public health program and the use of an effective vaccine. Interventions dictated by public health have been responsible for the successful control of many nutritional deficiencies, 
An example is that of goiter. A goiter is an enlargement of the thyroid gland in the neck due to impaired thyroid hormone synthesis, due to lack of iodine in the diet. The solution to the problem of nutritional goiter in the United States was to fortify salt with iodine, which virtually eradicated the problem. Another example is the reduction of tooth decay in the population. Frederick McKay, in 1891, first described the association between a reduction in the incidence of dental caries or tooth decay in populations and the addition of fluoride to drinking water. In 1945, Dr. H. Trendley Dean and associates at the National Institute of Health added fluoride to the drinking water in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and showed a subsequent reduction in caries. Now, more than 10,000 U.S. communities fluoridate their water. So, how has public health improved health care? Public health is directly responsible for improvement in understanding disease. Epidemiology is the basic science of public health. It is a quantitative basic science built on a working knowledge of probability, statistics, and sound research methods. It is a method of causal reasoning based on developing and testing hypotheses pertaining to occurrence and prevention of morbidity and mortality. Epidemiology is also a tool for public health action to promote and protect the public's health based on science, causal reasoning, and a dose of practical common sense. Here is an example of epidemiology at work. In 1854, an epidemic of cholera ravaged London, England. Cholera is a bacterial disease spread by contamination of food or water. Lack of sanitation and overcrowding were important factors that led to the spread of disease. Dr. John Snow, a physician, linked the spread of disease to a contaminated public water pump on Broad Street. Snow hypothesized that the disease was spread by contaminated water, and he used statistics to connect the quality of water to the number of cases of cholera. Public health has also led to improvements in healthcare, resulting from improvements in data collection and methods to carry out experiments. An example of this would be field surveys. In this type of research, data about individuals is collected in the field. Progressive improvements in methodology have led to the use of improved scientific research designs. Cohort studies are one example. This is a form of a longitudinal study that follows two or more sets of patients. One set has a characteristic that is being considered. The other does not have the characteristic. Randomized controlled trials, or RCTs, represent another improved scientific research design. RCTs reduce sampling bias in scientific studies. Patients who are otherwise identical are assigned to one of two groups. The experimental group receives an intervention, and the control group does not. This reduces the incidence of confounding variables in data analysis. An example of improvements in data collection leading to better public health is the Framingham Heart Study. In 1948, the National Heart Institute, which is now the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute of the National Institutes of Health, and Boston University began the Framingham Heart Study. The study recruited men and women from the town of Framingham, Massachusetts, and followed them for a substantial number of years to attempt to identify factors that contribute to the development of cardiovascular disease. Over the years, three generations of participants have helped to identify major cardiovascular disease risk factors. With the assistance of these patients, researchers have also attempted to understand the effects of cardiovascular disease risk factors on other diseases, such as hypertension, also called high blood pressure, and dementia. In addition to improvements in data collection, public health has also benefited from improvements in data analysis. For example, use of tools such as multivariate analysis and meta-analysis offer specialized options to analyze collective data. There has also been an improvement in disease surveillance. One example is the Real-Time Outbreak and Disease Surveillance, or RODES, laboratory, which is a biosurveillance research laboratory at the University of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. 
This laboratory uses software and algorithms to monitor emergency rooms and retail stores to detect and assess disease outbreaks. As you can imagine, this is of immense use in the public health arena. Public health has also benefited from improvement in training. In the early 20th century, in part due to the Welch Rose Report of 1915, and also partially because of the support of the Rockefeller Foundation, many schools of public health were established and began awarding professional degrees, such as the Master of Public Health. And finally, public health has also benefited from improvement in infrastructure at the federal, state, and local health department levels. This concludes Lecture B of Introduction to and History of Modern Healthcare in the U.S. In summary, Public health is the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting health, and involves various organizations within society. Public education, education remains a primary motivator of public health achievements. Public health has significantly affected the control of infectious diseases, helped identify nutritional deficiencies, and contributed to a greater understanding of diseases. It has also supported improvements in data collection, training, and infrastructure.